Meanwhile, friends, sorry, I lost track of time. I'm out here in my garden, I'm just pulling a few weeds, and uh, just wanted to say hello and bring you a faith lift this morning. And for those of you who have been with me before, you, uh, you probably don't recognize my garden. This isn't the pretty garden that you know me to have, that you, uh, some of you wish you had yourself. Trust me, you don't wish you had this part of my garden. You know, God placed this message on my heart while I was pulling weeds at my son's garden. Not that I don't have enough of my own, but uh, his is more fun to work in than mine, I think. And I actually thoroughly considered going back to his house and giving this message from his garden so that you wouldn't know that I had weeds in mine. Uh, this isn't pretty. This is hard work and it's discouraging, but, uh, and I would much rather uh, all my garden looked like the one that you've been seeing. But the message that God placed on my heart with all of this, and I decided that I couldn't go to Trevor's house and do this message from there because it wouldn't be true. Um, I could deflect the responsibility of the weeds in my garden to somebody else and pretend that I didn't have any and um, that wouldn't be truthful and I couldn't do that. But all of this gave me pause with what has been going on in our world in the last couple of weeks since the death slash murder of George Floyd and other people of colors. And, um, you know, it has, it has shown the underbelly of so many of us in society, in the world, particularly here in America. And, you know, we all have weeds in our garden there's that's just the reality of life they come you fertilize the flowers you plant the flowers you till the soil and you fertilize and weeds are opportunistic and they're always there the weed seeds uh, can lay dormant for years and still sprout up um, just look at your lawns with your dandelions so the scripture that um, came to me was the parable of the sower. It is in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And I'm going to share with you the one from Luke. I'm going to take off my uh, garden gloves because I don't think I can, um, uh, I don't think I can turn pages with them on. And Jesus says this, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. And still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, and even a hundred times. Now what does that have to do with weeds? Because farmers certainly don't sow weeds, or at least not willingly. But with any given seed, there is, there is a small percentage of weed seed that cannot be separated out. Now when Jesus tried to explain this parable, to his friends, saying, the farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, they, others like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown in the thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. 
Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. When farmers in those days particularly would sow seeds, they didn't plant in rows as farmers do in modern times. They would simply reach into their bag and they would toss it and they would throw it and the wind would carry it and they would broadcast it and it, it wouldn't all land exactly where they wanted it to. Hence the path and the shallow soil and the thorns. Um, it takes a long time to clear away thorns. So sometimes you, you clear a path, but they will encroach anyway. You just do the best that you can so that your plot maybe isn't quite as pristine as you would like it to be. We are a lot like this. Sometimes it's hard to discern how this can be us. And with the problems, with the with the awareness of what, what has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years. The path, the path people, those are the ones that refused to believe God's message in the first place. They just didn't want to hear it. Landed on the path, was quickly blown away. The rock people believed his message but they never quite got around to doing anything about it. Hmm, that's a good idea. We have to make sure in this time of protests and anger and calling for justice that we are not the rock people, that we are all going right now. It's really easy to say, there's got to be a change. We're going to have to do this. But we have to make sure that we get around to doing something. The thorn people, well, they heard the message, but they were really so overcome with day-to-day -day worries and concerns and making a living and accumulating their wealth and their things and their materialism. It just left no room in their lives to truly follow God, to do the sacrifices that he asked us to do. But the seeds and the people who fall on the good soil, those are the ones who followed Jesus unconditionally, who did anything they, he asked them to do. And that is really what our world and our society right now is calling and asking of us, to do whatever it is that needs doing, to fix the things that need fixing, to right the wrong. They've been wrong for so long that we we don't know how they could possibly be right because this is what's normal. And as the COVID time has shown us in our great pause, there can be another normal. Uh, I have enjoyed the not enough of it here in the weeds because quite honestly, I didn't want to work in the weeds. I chose to work in the path that was the easiest, but Jesus doesn't always take us down the path that's the easiest. Sometimes and oftentimes, his way is hard. But if we keep our eyes focused on God and we keep our face toward the sun, uh, he shows us a way. He shows us the way. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be quite as hard. It's a short message today because I have a lot of weeds to pull and I'm pretty sure you don't want to help me with this. So I encourage you today, this week, this weekend that's supposed to be so gorgeous, to just get outside and take a look at the weeds in your yard. Pull some. See what you can do about them. But also take some time to look at the weeds in your life. The weeds that choke out the what would Jesus do part of our lives. He's with us every day. He's encouraging us. He's hoping and waiting for us to, for us to be rooted in the good soil so that we might follow unconditionally, that we might love our neighbors as he loved each and every one of us. We are made in God's image, each one of us. And 
Uh, God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make junk, to uh, quote a phrase from a poster from the 80s, um, or probably even before that. Seems like I saw that in college. And, you know, ladies, gentlemen, there's all so much we can do. Reach out. There are so many resources. There are so many good books. Just pick up a phone and have a conversation. Have a conversation with your neighbor. I am blessed to live in Brown Deer, one of the most integrated areas uh, outside of the city of Milwaukee, but in the metro area. And um, I have wonderful neighbors, wonderful neighbors, and of all races. And um, we are aware of each other's color, but we are also aware of each other's gifts and enjoy each other's company. Um, I'm waiting for my neighbor Cliff to come out with his lawnmower, but one on the other side has. So have a great day. Uh, enjoy, enjoy this blue sky. There's not a cloud in it. And um, I guess I have to take my glove off to stop all of this. Um, have a wonderful day. We will see you next week.